Hey everyone, I'm Yolanda Johnson Bryant, and this is The Other Side of the Dash. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Other Side of the Dash podcast. This is episode one, and it's promised in the pilot episode, we are going to be talking about his needs, her needs, and also as promised, my guest, Mr. Gregory Bryant, my husband. Welcome right. to the show. Glad to be here, glad to be here. It's all good. So, we're going to start this off, and we're going to try to make these episodes as short as possible. Uh, we want to keep and retain your attention, and we don't want to make them long and boring. So, we want to keep the topics on point and interesting. So, today's topic is going to be coming from a book that I was gifted about 15 years ago, and it's called His Needs, Her Needs, and this book is by Willard F. Harley Jr. It is a very valuable resource. And uh, I think it'll help those of you who are young and those of you who are old. But you know we are basically gearing towards those people on the other side of their dash. And you might be thinking, well, why do I need that? And we're going to tell you why. What we're going to do is we're going to just discuss it a little bit. And I'm going to go through this book and just give a couple of examples. And my husband and I are going to give examples of what our needs were when we were younger what our needs were when we were in search of each other or basically when he was in search of me <laughs> and what they are now because your, your your needs do change as a growing couple now there are couples out there that have been married 50 60 years some who just got married gregory and i this is our second marriage and we've been married for 14 years in november so our needs when we first got together when he was in courting me are much different than are different now than they were then so we're going to go over that so i want to go ahead and just get started and and say that and i don't know if you will agree with this we want so many things so when we first start a relationship we are looking we have this list and women are guilty of this list i cannot speak for men do men have lists they're simple. I think a woman's list is very long. <laughs> a man's list is not that long. We, we're kind of basic. We don't sit there and write a list or anything. Okay, well, <laughs> personally, I have talked to some men who, who do have lists. My husband, he's a pretty simple guy. He doesn't ask for much. Uh, but there are men out there, you know, she has to have an hourglass frame. She has to look like this. She has to make her own money. She has to drive this. She has to own her. So, but we, but women, we are guilty of having these long, 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 unrealistic lists. So we have what we call, we think are our needs and they really are our wants. When we are young and we are starting out, you know, he has to make this much money. He has to do this and that. My money is his money and my money, no, his money my money is my money and his money is our money. Uh, so there are just so many different unrealistic goals and things we have on this list. But as you get close to finding someone, you start looking at things and you're thinking, now some will settle. They're not, no, am I in no way saying that you should settle for someone or some things? Cause there's things that are just off the table because one thing on your list might be, might be that he makes a lot of money but you never mentioned, well, he's abusive. So, you know, you don't want to... How he makes that money. Or how he makes that money, <laughs> exactly. So you want to just be very, very intentional with what your needs are, what you, even what your wants are, especially if you're asking God to send you a mate. So as you get older or even as you get close to being with that person, you're like, well, maybe he doesn't have... I I'll deal with this because he does this. Or I'll do this or deal with this because she does this, or I'll settle for this and that. Just be careful what you're settling on, but at the same time, be realistic. So Gregory, so Gregory and I, Gregory will be 60 years old next year. I will be 53 next year. So we are an older couple who are, who are 
raising our grandchild. So we have grown children. I have an adult daughter who's 32, a son who'll be 30 in November. You have adult children. Right. Uh, 35? 35 or 36? He's 36. Yeah, so. And 39. T. I mean, no, 40. T's 40? 40. Okay, so he has a son and a stepson, and they're 36 to 40. Mine are 29, almost 30 to 32. So we were empty nesters for a while, and then along comes my granddaughter. So no, we were raising her since she was three. She's 11. So even with her being thrown into the mix, our needs changed even more. So you, you have to, if you want to have a successful relationship, and if I, as I expressed in my pilot episode, I am not a certified uh, counselor or psychiatrist or therapist, but between us, we have some years of experience on what worked and what didn't work. And what works for us is not gonna work for you all the time or vice versa, but you gotta find what does work for you. So hopefully we can give you some information that will work for you. And as people on the other side of their dash, y'all, we need to get it together because I see older couples who have been together for a long time and they're asked what the secret is uh, for their longevity and some give some really good information, but others and you're like, wow, you guys stayed together through that? Well, we did it for the kids. We, we hate each other, but we put on a show for the kids. And yeah, that's very terrible. That's not healthy. What are some of the things that you've heard why couples stay together? Um, nobody want to deal with me. Or just everything that's uh, a lot of negative stuff, you know, and they don't feel like going through it or whatever or or I'm not going to let that person get the best of me, that type of thing, you know. And I think what he means by that, and correct me if I'm wrong, you know, this is the term, it's, it's cheaper to keep her. Yeah. You know, so they feel like, well, if I divorce her, she'll get half of what I have, right. what I ha you know, the money or whatever I have, and they don't want that to happen. So they'd rather stay with that person who's getting all of what they have and be miserable as opposed to being not miserable and letting that person have half. So right. I never understood that, but what inspires me are those people who have been married for a long time that tell me, we never go to bed angry. We realize tomorrow's not promised to us, so we, we work it out, we don't argue. Now, one thing I will tell you about Gregory and I, we do not argue. That is one thing I look back and I'm like, we don't argue. No, not really. You know, we'll say our piece. I'll say my piece, and you guys already know me. <laughs> I'll say my piece, and that's it. Gregory will say his piece and that's it. And we go on like as if, as if nothing happened. So that's one thing that I really appreciate about our relationship that has come into, uh, come to be one of my needs in our relationship. Because if you don't have peace in your relationship, you really don't want to be in that type of relationship where there is no peace. And we have peace. You know, do we have problems? Yes, we have problems like every couple. But that right there just brings me peace. Yeah, I agree with you. The, uh, there's nothing like having chaos and turmoil within your relationship, and especially towards the end of the night. It's a horrible thing to go to bed mad. I mean, extremely angry. You try to, you know, say what you need to say. Either I agree with you or you, you don't agree with me, and that's fine. It's okay to disagree with each other, and then you let it go. That's true. That's true. And another thing that I, I've heard older couples say is I'm still as much as much in love with him or her as I was the day I, I met them. Um, we still do silly things together. And, you know, the millennials will get a bad rap. You know, I have some of my complaints for the millennials, but I will give the millennials their prop because about you but when I grew up I was never taught um, continue to date your spouse date night was what date night what I was never taught that I never grew up in a, first of all I was raised by a single mother um, and so there it wasn't that wasn't that wasn't there that that example wasn't there that wasn't taught to me I don't know about you what about you in your household the same thing because I was raised by a single mother so, uh, 
there wasn't like a man there. So there wasn't any, you know, date night or interaction that way or whatever. So it, like with me, even though that wasn't in the house, we went to church and so on. We didn't see those examples. Now I, I'm old school, Gregory's old school, obviously, uh, but I'm much older than my 52 years per se, uh, because I've always grown up around older people, talked to older people, made myself in the presence of older people, basically never really had any friends my age and so on. So I never had, cause a lot of times we will make excuses for why we don't do things that we do when there are tons of examples around us. But I can truly say that there were no examples around us. So I will give it to the millennials, uh, this thing that they created, or maybe they didn't, I just remember them talking about it, date night. So those are things that I, I find that if you keep up in your relationship, those become some of your needs because you need that time to uh, refocus. Because we work during the week. Right. I can tell you about Gregory. Gregory works away from where we live. He's working 10, 11 hours a day. By the time he gets home, he's a zombie. So if he's doing that all week, it's like, when are we gonna take time to talk about us, uh, work on us? Me, I work a lot from home. And before I was homeschooling my granddaughter, she's at school now. So now I'm working, you know, full time, trying to do what I'm doing. And so it's like, okay, He'll come in and say something and I'm like, I ain't got time for you right now. So it's like, at what point do we come back and say, okay, we need to refocus on us. So that's why I thank millennials for the, for the date night. And I find, I'm finding this is one of my needs. Whereas when we first got married, it wasn't necessarily it wasn't. one of my needs. So I'm going to ask you, Gregory, just give us three things. So let's do this in this, this manner. When you f were pursuing me or pursuing a mate, what was, let's say, three of your needs then, and just tell us how now that you're going to be 60 next year, insert laughter, um, <laughs> how, how those needs have changed. So go ahead. It's, well, it's, it's funny um, how uh, basically... In reality, from the time I pursued you to now, the needs are not, they're not a big difference, mainly because of the fact that I pursued you as I was older. Okay, so give, me, so give me three. Yeah, I'll give you three. Um, most important thing, well, one thing was uh, that I needed from my mate was a trust, to trust me, to... To have faith in me to believe that, you know, I got your back, you know, no matter what, I got your back. You may not seem, it may not seem like it, but I got your back, you know. Uh, the other thing was, uh, I guess I would say, space at times, you know, have a little bit of space at times, you know, um, and just do the do little stupid men thing. <laughs> it's the men things, you know. Um, the other one is uh, it's probably twofold because it's they kind of connected was communication and intimacy. Because we, you know, you need need to talk. You know, I'm not the best at talking. I will admit that. <laughs> I'm not the best at that. But I know it's something that that needs to be done, you know, you need to talk and you need that intimacy, you know, to talk or whatever. Those are three of my things. And the whole thing of it is, is that it hasn't changed much from when we were dating okay. to now. Cause like I said, it would have been totally different when I was younger, you know, but at that point I had some years and I think, what was I, 40? 30. I was 40. You were over 40, yeah. <laughs> I was over 40. Oh my goodness. <laughs> but I was over 40 at that point. So at that point, it was different than when I was 19 and 20 and 25. Mm -hmm. It was a totally different thing. So just from the standpoint of us from point A to now, 
the the needs really have basically changed. We just uh, just have us be together. That's that's a major thing too. It's just be together. Okay. So my three things when we first when he courted me and he sought me out. I want to make that very clear. He sought me out. <laughs> <laughs> He just pointed at me, y'all. Just joking. Uh, but um, <laughs> one was to have someone, then to have someone who was going to be a leader. And now when I say be a leader, I mean be over our household, be over our marriage, be over our covenant under God. Because we know that God is first. the is first. first He's over foremost. everything. So I wanted him to assume that role as a husband uh, in being our spiritual uh, head, uh, being our financial head, and everything else that that entailed. Uh, the second thing that I wanted at that time, I wanted uh, a lot of intimacy. And then, now, a lot of things can fall under the, the term mm -hmm. intimacy. But then intimacy, it was, I wanted to be around him all the time. I wanted to... Um, I wanted to be adored and worshipped around him, and I wanted a lot of sex. The third thing is I wanted someone who was able to communicate his feelings. Now, I, I, I've mentored several people. Uh, I have even experienced this in my dating life and even in the first marriage. Uh, sometimes men and even women will say, well, I never had that example. I never knew how to do this, so that's why I don't know how to do it now. And they leave it there because what they're basically saying is, my excuse is because I didn't have that, I never learned it, and I have no intention on learning it. So my thing was communication and self-expression. I wanted that from the beginning, and that still has not changed. Uh, I believe that, yes, you know, a, a lot of people grow up in single uh family uh, parent households there are people who grow up in where they have both their parents and they still are not taught that because they see their parents they're totally not, not interacting with each other they the dad goes to work the mom cleans the house they go to sleep and they do it all over again there's no love no intimacy between the couple to make an example for the kids and and i'm i'm like that is no longer acceptable because you have uh, a lot of resources. You have other people in your life. Maybe it be an uncle or aunt. Maybe it be cousins. Maybe it be grandparents. Maybe it be people of the church. Uh, your your friends, parents, whatever the case, there's TV. I mean, granted that TV is far-fetched, but you're spending a lot of time on that TV watching romantic comedy. Something should have clicked in at some point. So that is one thing that has not changed for me. So I'll go back to what, what has changed my three things currently so that is one thing that has not changed i am a stickler for a person to communicate and express themselves it irritates me to no avail and mr bryant will tell you if he's not communicating or expressing i'm going to be very verbal because it's like okay look we should even be at this point because as you said this or had you done that or whatever the case may be we wouldn't be here so just say it i'm not a person for even though i do babble a lot I'm not a person for, if I ask you what direction is the store, I either want to hear from you left or right, up, down, north, south, west, east. Well, you know, down the street, you know, because Billy's cousin lives on the corner, you know, and if you go around, I don't want to hear all that. Communicate to me the facts and tell me how you feel, short and sweet. So that's one thing. The second thing is intimacy. However, intimacy has changed. I still enjoy sex, but... I want something deeper. You know, when we're younger, we don't, we're not deep people. We always want to hump, 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 whatever you want to call it. We're not like, well, you know, tell me your, 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 your fears, your, your dreams, your goals, where you see us, you know, 20 years from now, 30, 40. I, that's where I'm at now. I want something that's deeper, something that's meatier. You know, let's, what about our spiritual growth? You know, where do you see us retirement? What, what hurts you? Have I done something to hurt you? What can I do to help protect your heart? That kind of stuff I want to hear. And one thing that hasn't changed is I still want a person that is going to be the head over the house, household in all aspects. Now, the problem I have with this is when you tell some people this, they take it and they use the bits and pieces to benefit yeah. them and what they want to say, right? Exactly. So give me an example. Um... Oh, the woman should be submissive. And she should, but... Right, but not, not a slave. 
Because that's what a lot of men take that whole passage way and say, well, you're supposed to be submissive. But I mean, it's, you don't want nobody to just stick around and be a dummy. <laughs> just whatever you like. Yeah, exactly. That's not, you know, that's not what it means. It means that she be submissive to you, but you got to listen to her. It, it isn't just a, a one-way ticket, in other words. Right. And some will, will, women will be like, well, he's supposed to take care of me. And granted, he is supposed to take care of you financially. Mm -hmm. However, ladies, if your man's out working and he comes home, you sitting watching TV, watching, eating bonbons, or if the house is not clean, the children are dirty, Dinner's not cooked, right. whatever. Or that, you give him a TV dinner. Right, a TV dinner. <laughs> that man is not going to want to continue to come home to that. So you have your role, he has his role. Right, exactly. So, Rose. right, so we have to keep that in context. You know, again, this is not a spiritual show, but I told you guys, I warned you, I'm going to throw my faith in there every now and then. Yeah. So the Bible says that the, the man is supposed to love his wife as Christ loved the church. So Christ loves you, right? He loves the church. He provides, he protects, he ministers, he comforts. That's what a man's supposed to do. Exactly. Nowhere in there does it say a woman's supposed to love her husband, That's but true. it does say she is supposed to submit, submit to her own husband, her own husband. So if you guys need clarification, on what those roles look like, go to church, go to counseling, it'll tell you. And I'm not against secular counseling, I'm not, because it can help a lot of people. But when secular counseling starts to go against your faith, then you need to let that go. So I'll just leave that, sit that little tidbit right there, right. and you do with it what you will. But those are the three things I'm finding that I am needing as I am an older woman. I'm gonna throw a fourth in there too. Because I was a PYT when we got together. <laughs> I'm now a POT. <laughs> Pretty old thing with L's and, 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 and elements and aches and pains. But still, but still pretty. Oh, thank you. He's so pretty. sweet. And I need somebody that's going to understand that and not be like, well, I'm leaving you because you have a hip problem or, you know, you, you might be uh, diagnosed with cancer or, or whatever. And so I don't, I don't need those problems. So I'm out of here. I don't need that kind of person. I need a ride or die at this point. You know, look. Exactly. Because truth be told, both of us are getting old. Yeah, both of us got old. ailments. So ailments. we might as well ride this out until Jesus comes. <laughs> Right? Exactly. No problem. So I'm going to go ahead and read some of these things that you can find in this book. And again, I do highly recommend this book. Uh, uh, you can get it on Amazon. and you Or you don't have to. There are some quizzes. I just found out there's some quizzes in the back of the book that can help you and your mate uh, relate or, you know, to help you guys reconnect. I found out that there are some quizzes online if you just put the search his or his needs, her needs quiz in and they'll come up and you guys can do that. But I do highly recommend you read the book if you can. Go to the library if you can't afford the book or just buy the book, you know. Uh, it'll come in handy. I've used this book when I was dating. I used this book when I got married. I've used it in, in the middle of our, our 14 years. I'm using it now. So it's a timeless book that I think can help if you guys continue to revisit because things change. Who I was 14 years ago is not who I am now. Who he is was 14 years ago is not who he not is now. Same. No, it's not the same. It, and you're going to change. It's just a matter of how you change. That's the key. Because you're going to change. Because uh, And you're supposed to change. You're not supposed to be the same. Right. You're supposed to, as you get older, you're supposed to get a little wiser. Yes. And everything, you know, or, you know, and going back to spiritualness, you know, you find your spiritual self. You know, you're supposed to grow that way. And that's how you're supposed to, you're supposed to have growth. I agree. So we're going to go ahead and go through a couple of these uh, things here. And we're going to, like I said, try to keep this as short as possible. But I'm going to pick a topic. So I'll start with me. It says the first thing that she can't do without is affection. And I, I really agree with that because if 
you have a man or a, a, a mate a, a husband let's put it this way a husband or spouse who is taking care of you financially making sure the bills are paid but you don't have that affection uh that connection that intimate connection basically you're you're a roommate basically you just you're just not gonna you know your roommate basically is what it is i don't want a roommate i want someone that i can live my life with be happy with cry with you know pray together and things like that so i do need affection i do agree with that and i do need for some men to uh find out the clarification of what the definition of affection is um it's not always sex so when we say we want intimacy well i'm tired I, no that's not exactly what we're talking about you know a hug you know a kiss on the forehead holding hands while we're watching a movie let me lay on you or you know come up behind me you know while i'm cooking you dinner or something like that or you know husband um honey i really uh, enjoy that you 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 made that meal for you i love that i want you to cook that more often or honey i really appreciate what you do or honey you look really good in that dress you know whatever now i'm not saying lie now now man don't lie to your wives do not lie to her and tell her she looks good in the dress she don't look out because she got to go outside in the dress that you know she don't look good in and people are going to be saying now she ain't got no friends because they would have told her not to leave the house with that dress <laughs> so i'm just saying be real but be authentic and intentional in telling her this now another thing it says is that one of the uh, needs of a man is sexual so i'll let you speak on that sir well i mean it is and it's not it is it definitely was when when you're younger as you go about because you're younger now it's a little more you know it's it's a need but it's not as strong as it was when you were younger because uh you know a lot of things happen as you get older you know when you hit 50 40 40 and 50 and then 60, 60. It, it it changes the uh probably the frequency might change um the uh just you know because and you may not be as good as you were before because things do happen you get older <laughs> but um it's a it's definitely it's a need though it is a uh it's a part of the it's a part of the, it's not the major part of the affection but it's part of it you know, it runs into the same, you know, category with it. So I want to be clear when we're talking about intimacy, uh, because as Mr. Bryant just said, sex is not as important. I believe it's still in, important, but not as important. But I want to make sure you guys get this right. So I have a friend. I won't mention his name. He has gone through cancer treatments. And because of it, he can no longer satisfy a woman sexually. So he thinks his life is over. And I'm sorry, as we get older, this is why intimacy is important because sex is not everything. If it came down to a man who's gonna understand me, love me, care about me, and all the other stuff, and there was no sex, I would choose the no sex because life is more about this. As we get older anyway, I mean, sex becomes less and less frequent because one is the desire is not as strong or we just our bodies just can't move the way they used to move so i just want to encourage him to let him know if there is somebody out there that will love you for who you are despite of what you think you can or you can't do there are other ways to do things so i just want to give you that encouragement so this one is interesting it says she needs a good husband one who she can trust and depend on and it's funny because he mentioned earlier i believe he mentioned earlier about you one of your needs then and one now is for your wife to trust you right so um exactly. she needs to be able to trust him so i don't know if you want to elaborate on this so if a woman has a man who does suspect things she is not going to trust him exactly. or if she is in a predicament and she doesn't feel safe with him or as if he's going to protect her, she might not trust him then either. So elaborate on when you say you need me to trust you. Let's just say me or her to trust you. What are you referring to exactly? Well, 
well, basically, I guess I, in a way, what I said is like that to trust me that I won't hurt you. Okay. You know, or that that I got your back. That you're, you know, I'm not gonna let anything happen to you. Okay. You know, and I'm gonna be there no matter what for you and the little one and all that kind of for the family that I'm gonna be there and trust me. I may make and trust that even though I make a mistake, that I did not make the mistake selfishly, that I did it for you or I did it for us or whatever, you know, and it's just something that didn't work out right. Right. You know, just, you know, trust and believe. Right. And it also says that one of the needs that he needs is for his wife to still look continually attractive. Talk about that. Yes, you want you, well, you, how, how they say, aesthetics? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you want the aesthetics. You still want, I mean, you, you, you're not gonna, don't want you to run around dropping it like it's hot. Because <laughs> <laughs> if I do, I might get back up. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's nothing like that, you know, but you just want to, um, you know, you, you want that, you want the, the guys to kind of like, you know, he's got an attractive wife, you know, you, you like that, you know, you like to see, you know, you know, the compliments or whatever, you know, as long as they stay within their boundaries. But yes, you know, just like, I'm quite sure she wants me to look decent too, to have, to have some attraction too. So the last, the so the last two we're going to do is she needs enough money to live peacefully and comfortably. So I'm going to speak on that. I'm not going to lie. So you can sit here and say, well, I, you know, it's not about money. It's not about money. No, but to say, I don't want a man or be one of those women. Well, I got my own money. Yeah. I can take care of myself. That well may be true. Look, I work too, but God said he's supposed to take care of me and the family. So I do have that need of what if I, you know, you guys know I'm retired in most cases, but somebody may, brought it to my attention. I, I had a doctor's appointment and he asked me what I did. I said, well, I'm kind of retired, but I do this, 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 and this, this, and I kept, you know, Lying listing stuff. the stuff that I did. He goes, well, then you're not retired. <laughs> so, you know, if I get to the point where I decide I don't want to ever do anything else again, he needs to be okay with that because he is the head, he is the provider, and that is what God called him to do. Now, I'm luckily for him, I'm not one of these women who were like, well, you go sit home, take care, I mean, you go out and work, and you take care of me, and I'm not going to do nothing. Anybody who knows me, I have never been able to not do anything. I have, he'll tell you, I am guilty of even family time. I'm trying to work on family time. I'm doing this and that. He'll tell you. To sit around and do nothing, that is not in my nature. Nah. But if I should so choose to do that, I want him to be okay with that and knowing that that's what God called him to do. How do you feel about that? Yeah, that's, uh, I, be I believe in that. Also, the women that say, um, and you got to question a guy if, a woman says, well, I don't need you. I don't need that money or whatever. I can make my own money or whatever. I question the guy as being as not being real if he allows his wife to run out on the street and then he's sitting at home. There's something wrong with that. And, and, and to tell you the truth, it's innate in men to be providers. It's, it's there. You know, you got some lazy guys, but... It's there. It's innate in every man to provide for his family and, and most real men. And, and I don't get caught in, and then I wouldn't get caught up in if she makes more money than me either. I don't have any problem with that either. You know, if she makes more money, but the thing about it is I'm still going to do my part, what I'm supposed to do. Right. And from a biblical sense, I am supposed to be taking care of my family. Right. You know, and, and for the women out there, I think my pastor said it best, Tony Evans of Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship. He said, it's okay if the woman out there making their own money, but not at the sacrifice of the household. So if you're out there making your money and you're not taking care of the kids, you're not cleaning the house, you're not cooking for him, uh, the kids, you don't know what's going on with the kids, you know, you're not raising them, then that is a problem. And I, and I totally agree with that. Right. Uh, the last one we're going to do is, it says that he needs his peace, his quiet, and his alone time. You really want to spend time away from me? 
<laughs> no, it's sometimes you just need that moment to, to think. And it might be a need in the moment, like in the morning, like when I wake up, I go and say my prayers. So I need that space for me and God to talk. You know, I don't, at that point, I don't need everybody around me. I just need that time for me and God to, to talk. So that's kind of like your space. You know, you have your prayer moment and you have your moments where there's certain things that I like that she doesn't like. Right. You know, like baseball cards. <laughs> <laughs> I collect baseball cards and I look at my cards sometime or whatever. And same thing with sports, because I'm a sports person. I like sports. And I'll, you know, I don't look at sports um intently like I intensively like I used to. Yeah, I don't either. I used to. Yeah. But um I do like to look at it sometimes. So sometimes I'll go look at a game or something, look at a football game. She don't want to see the game. So that's my moment too, you know. So and vice versa. She need moments too, you know, she need her time away from us too. You know, just a little space sometime. A little peace. So you'll find a lot more of these uh these uh thought-provoking situations in the book and no this book is not uh sponsored but this book is a valuable resource it's, again this is not sponsored a valuable resource i do suggest you know all married couples read this keep it in your library mm -hmm. and revisit it often i would just say this is just my suggestion again i'm not a licensed therapist or a psychiatrist uh but i will say or marriage counselor i will say that i would if not every year, maybe every couple years, revisit that book because like I said, things change, especially as you get older, you know, and then as you, those of you who don't know what your purpose is, uh, you might finally find your purpose and realize, okay, I don't need that anymore. I don't care about this anymore. I do care about this. This is something new. So, uh, but you have to take your mate along with you and you guys have to have those discussions, um, which is why communication is very important. So have those discussions on Honey, does it still work for you? You know, honey, do you still want me? Do you still want me swinging from a chandelier? <laughs> do you still want to break in every room? Do you still want me walk around in four inch heels? <laughs> that ain't even gonna happen. You know, or honey, do you still want me to? Ha -ha? Do you still want me to? Ha -ha? You know, revisit. Well, no, honey, I just want you to hug me. That's all I want to do. I want to watch a stupid movie while we eat junk food <laughs> and laugh. Right. That's 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 not something that I wanted to do in the beginning, but I can tell you now we enjoy doing that. <laughs> yes. You know, they call it Netflix and chill. I recently found out what the chill part mean. We may not be Netflix and chilling, <laughs> but we Netflix and chillaxing. Hey, that's one of my words from back in the day, huh? <laughs> chillaxing. So I hope you guys found some information uh, valuable in this particular episode. Episode one, Other Side of the Dash. Like I said, there are some questionnaires online. If you just go to Google and you will find uh, the questionnaires that are in the back of this book that will help you reconnect with your partner. Uh, because again, sometimes our partners, they uh, shut us out or they, they, they shrink up and they won't tell us how they feel. And you can't continue to go, to, go through a relationship thinking you or assuming you know how someone feels and on the other side you can't go through a relationship assuming someone knows about what your wants are or by you not saying anything so you have to communicate um you know i keep going back to sex because we are a married couple you know i used to like a slap on the butt every now and then <laughs> probably not the christian most christian thing to say but now you've been not hit me <laughs> you know so i'm just saying things change the reality is Things do change, and it is important that you guys are constantly, this say less than a year. If something changes and you're like, you know what? I no longer like that. That no longer brings me joy. That actually makes me feel uncomfortable. You have to communicate that to your spouse. So I do strongly urge you to do that. Again, I hope you got something out of this particular episode. So join me next week where my topic will be raising our children's children this should be a really deep one because we are raising our grandchild and uh where we thought we would be empty nesters uh it's gonna be a while so <laughs> i do want to discuss that so join us next wednesday as we talk about raising our children's children i'm yolanda johnson bryant and this has been the other side of the dash